take care of it, you know. Yeah. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of me. And so yeah. we're going to be all right. Yeah. right? We're going to be okay. And, uh, man, it is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, Memorial Day is that time we set aside to remember and to honor those that gave their life for our country. Yeah. And, uh, boy, I tell you, I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel about it, but... Uh, I, I am one person that is so proud Amen. to be an American, and, and I'm so glad to live in a country where we're free, we have the freedom we do, and uh, I realize that freedom did not come cheap. Uh, I would encourage you, if you have never done so, I, I know some of you, the word read makes you cringe, but I'd encourage you sometimes to go and... Uh, pick up a book, or a few maybe, that have been written by those who served and uh, those who fought for our country. And uh, because all of them will tell you experiences where their friends did not survive. And uh, boy, the, the, the blood that was shed, the lives that were given, so we could have the freedom that we have today. Uh, let's never get to where we take it for granted, all right? Amen. Let's not uh, get to where we just say, well, you know, so be it. Boy, uh, it, it was bought at a great price. And by the way, it, it may take some more blood to keep our freedom, all right? And uh, I, I hope that, you know, we'll be the kind of people that uh, I would, uh, I'd rather die fighting for freedom than live a slave. I, I, mean, I, mean, I, I really would. And uh, so... Uh, I believe in those freedoms. I, I thank God for the Bill of Rights. Our, our government is not there to uh, tell us what to do. It's there to do what we tell it to do. And uh, if you don't vote, you should. If you're not registered to vote, then register and vote. And if you don't know how to vote, I'll help you, okay? Uh, but uh, and listen, I want you to vote even if you vote for somebody I think is a ninja poop. All right? I still think you ought to vote. All right? And uh, God's people ought to do that. And thank God for the freedom we have, you know? Uh, boy, what a blessing it is to be uh, in a country where we're free. We're free. I, I, it, it's caused me to cringe the last several weeks to be willing to do some of the things we've been asked to do. All right? Now, I'll be honest with you. Say, preacher, did you close and not have service because the government said you couldn't? No. We did it because they asked. As far as I'm concerned, they were asking. Yeah. And I was willing to cooperate with them. But, uh, I did, you know, I was, I was ready to go back when they decided, let's loosen up a little bit. And I'll say this. Thank God for the governor we have. I mean that. I, I'm glad for the governor we have. And, his stand on many, many things. I appreciate it. And so uh, uh, it's good to be back in the house of God, isn't it? Amen. And it's just good to be here. It's good to have you. It's good to have Kathy visiting uh, with us today. This is Miss Linda, Brother Marion's daughter. If you don't know her, where are you being? All right. But anyway, we're glad she's with us today. All right. Good to have her. Good to see one of you. Good to have my friend Jerry Chandler. Amen. Uh, He's back, and we were in the office reminiscing, you know. I've got some great stories I can tell you about Jerry. The only trouble is he may have some I don't want you to hear about me. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18, all right? 2 Kings chapter 18, we've known each other a long time. He is the product, he is the testimony to why you don't throw green peaches at the church bus, all right? Now, I don't think he was doing it. But he had brothers that were, and, and everybody got in the, the net. When the net went out, everybody got caught. So, But I'm glad. Hey, I look back. I'm glad they threw peaches at the bus. If they hadn't thrown those peaches at the bus, we might never met the Chandlers, and uh, those guys would have never come to church, and they might never got saved. And that would have been a terrible thing. Second Kings 18. Are you there? Verse 17. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rapsurus and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of, of the upper pool, which is the, in the highway of the fuller's field. 
<coughs> and when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? <coughs> Notice that question. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Um, you've been coming, you've been paying attention, you know, I'm preaching a series on the great questions in the Bible. You know, some of those questions, I knew when I started preaching that I would deal with those questions. This is a question I really had no thought about and didn't even think about it until I was studying and seeking God's direction. And I came across this question. Uh, we've looked at questions that have been asked by the devil. We've looked at questions that have been asked by the prophet. We've looked at questions that have been asked by the king. Now we've got a question that is asked by a real strong unbeliever. Unbeliever. And there's the question he asked. He said, what confidence is this wherein Thou trust. Well, I would think of a better time in history, maybe, than to ask that question of God's people today. Hey, what are you trusting in? Why do you have the confidence that you have? Hey, there's a reason. There's a reason, okay? Uh, this question was really directed to Hezekiah to begin with, but really then to the whole country the whole people of the nation of Judah. And uh, he, he, he was asking them, uh, just kind of remind you of a few things, all right? Uh, I know all of you are very familiar with Bible history, and you could probably tell this yourself. But uh, back after Solomon's reign, after Solomon died, his son was going to take the throne, and uh, just cut to the chase, the nation was split into two pieces. It was split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom of Israel went into captivity first. They were carried into captivity by the nation of Assyria. And, and it's talked about in this chapter a little bit in verse 9, 10, and 11, how the, the king uh, at that time of Assyria led his people, led his armies down, captured the northern kingdom of Israel. They were taken into captivity. And, and now that same nation, led by another king that's ascended the throne, a guy by the name of Sennacherib, he's now threatening the southern kingdom. And he comes down there. Uh, this was in the period when the Assyrian kingdom was, man, it was just spreading like wildfire. All directions, uh, they were vicious, they were a heartless, they were very cruel people. I mean, extremely cruel people. And here's Sennacherib, he sent three emissaries, and, and the Bible names them for us, Tartan, Rapturus, and Rabshaka. Aren't you glad your mama didn't name you that? All right? But uh, that was their names. And, and they, they came up, his emissaries, they came with a message for Hezekiah. And it seems like maybe Rabshaka was the, he was the spokesman for the group. And, and, and when I read this question and read this chapter, well, I, I believe I can hear the arrogance. Yes, sir. Yeah. The yeah. arrogance, the sarcasm, and even the derision right. coming out of the mouth of Rabshakeh when he asked this question, aimed at his guy, aimed at the people of God. Right. And, and it was, you know, just an insulting kind of thing right. was who or what are you trusting to deliver you from the great king right, right. and the nation of Assyria. Right. Look down, if you will, same chapter, verse 33. Verse 33. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvain, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? What a sarcastic, impudent punk, all right? Coming out this way. And he said to him, you know, hey, who, who, who do you think is going to deliver you? 
all the other gods, they did no good for their nation. They didn't help it. And his message was basically, you come, you surrender now, and we'll leave you alone until we're ready, and then we'll transport you, and we'll put you in another place, but you'll still be better off, or you can die right here. That was basically what it is. Hey, it was put up or shut up time, all right? Amen. Now, I look at this question, and I think about the day of uncertainty in which we live. Right. The day of pessimism. Uh, the day where a lot of people question God's people. Yeah. Mm, right. And, uh, you know, they would come and say, just where do you place your confidence? Mm. What is it that makes you have the attitude that you have? And, and what is it or who is it that you're trusting in today? Mm. Now, I ask that question and, hey, where are we? We're, we're in the church building. Well, who's going to stand up and say anything but, oh, I'm trusting in God? Well, wait a minute. I know you can say that. Yeah. But how's your life display that? Right. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing for your life, your actions, if you will, to back up that statement. Because I've run across a lot of things that people are willing to trust in and to put their confidence in more than they put it in God. A multitude, for instance, of people put their trust in themselves. Right, right. Put the, their trust in themselves. Multitude of people do. You said, oh, preacher, now wait a minute. Before you get the back pedaling and say, not me, not me. Uh, just who is it that made out your plans for life? Right. Who is it that you look to for solutions? I mean, where do you go? How, how did you determine the course of action for your life? What made you do what you did in life? What is it that's leading you to do what you're doing right now in life? I mean, let's just be honest about it, all right? Uh, you know, when you run into new circumstances and difficult circumstances, who makes the decision? How do you decide what you're going to do? I mean, just what, what do you do? How do you go about it? And I'm reminded there's a fellow there in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 12 that he was blessed abundantly and, and he, he looked around and he said, man, I don't even have enough barns to put in everything that I've got in the field. He said, so we're going to tear them down, we're going to build them bigger and then I'm going to store everything up and I'm going to say, take it easy because I'm set for the rest of my life. Right. But you remember what the Bible said? Yeah. God said to that guy, thou fool, right. this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Right. Hey, listen, there's a ton of people just exactly like that guy in the Bible that are trusting themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's what I can do. It's my strength. It's my uncanny ability. It's my great wisdom. And I'm counting on it to get me through. Right. A lot of people doing that. On the other hand, there's a lot of people today that are looking to, to wealth, looking to riches to get them through in life. You said, oh, no, no, no. Really? Not you, huh? Have you ever played the lottery? Now, now would not be the time to stand up and testify yes, all right? That's, this is one of those questions it'd be better if you just sit on a little bit. Think about it. A multitude of people playing the lottery. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you go into a place of business like racetrack down here where my brother buys his ticket? Oh. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, why would you go into a place like racetrack down there and lay down your money for a car right here and you say, man, I hope this is a winning one. I hope I pick the right number. Why would you pay good money for a piece of paper? Yeah. Listen, if you got, how much it costs to play lot? I, all right, I'm not going to ask you because you're, you're going to sit there in silence. Uh -huh. I wouldn't know. All right. I, I know there's some games that you can play for two, some you can play for five. And I, let, let's assume it's a two dollar. Okay. If you've got two dollars you want to give for a piece of paper, I got a lot of pieces of paper. Just come by my house, would you? All right. I'll sell you some paper for two bucks a piece. All right. 
be glad to do that. Uh, and by the way, your chances will be about the same. You say, well, Lord, I didn't have any numbers on it. Won't be entered. Chances are about the same. You'll win, okay? And why do people go do that? Because they think I win it. Take care of all my problems. Right. That would take care of my problem. I'm trusting in that money. Now, some people, you're not playing the lottery, but there's a lot of folks in this whole world, they're building up a stockpile for retirement. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea is, man, I'm storing it away, maybe working two jobs, and, and I'm doing everything I can. I'll never forget knocking on the door of a fellow right down here in the apartment complex where my wife and I, the first place we ever lived after we got married, and uh, we rented an apartment down there for about a year. I'll never forget knocking on the door down there, and this young guy comes out, and, and he looks me in the eye, and he said, man, I can't come to church. I'm working. I got three jobs. I'm getting everything going because I'm going to retire early. Oh, boy. Because he thinks money's the answer. I'm trusting wealth. Right, right. I'm trusting wealth. A lot of people are. Well, what does the Bible say? Well, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28 says, He that trusteth in his riches shall fall. Right. Shall fall. That same chapter, verse 4, says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Right. Now listen to me. If you've got a 401k or a 1807k, whatever the number is, all right, and you've got a retirement plan, please don't misunderstand. I'm not against that at all. I'm not against that. But I'll tell you what, if you're trusting riches, you miss what the Bible says in numerous places about the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of riches. When this whole pandemic deal got started, you remember what happened to the stock market? All right? It took a dive. I'm so glad I didn't lose a dime. Amen. Doesn't have anything there. <laughs> I didn't, didn't lose a dime, you know. Um, but a lot of people, hey, back in the days of the Depression, in the 20s, uh, late 20s, early 30s of this last century, people were diving out of windows because they put their trust in riches. Put their trust in riches. But how many times have we read about people making a fortune and losing it? How many times have we heard stories of athletes, very famous athletes, that were exceedingly well paid, made millions of dollars, and then we hear about them having to sell their Super Bowl rings because they didn't have any money? The deceitfulness of riches. Okay? The deceitfulness of riches. Hey, you trust in money? In this day, so I have my trust, it's in my bank account. Okay. A host of people in our day are trusting the government. Right. Oh, yeah. Man, we look to the government. More and more people in this day are coming to trust the government to take care of them. The government to provide for them, all right? Um, politicians are elected by getting up and promising, hey, we'll give you everything you can. Oh, yeah. Man, uh, we hear about our rights. You know, used to, the rights that we had were ones that were in the Constitution, you know? Mm -hmm. But now we hear about the right to free college education. The right to affordable housing. The right to health care. Where, where's that coming from? That's people trying to get you to trust the government to take care of you. And, and all this free stuff from the only thing that is free in this world is the salvation that Jesus Christ offers to you. That's the only thing that's free. Everything else has a price tag. Now, if you don't pay it, somebody else has to. Somebody else has to. Because it's got a price tag. That uh, that stuff that you have, stuff. that stuff that you get, does not just appear. No, no. Somebody labored to make it. Yeah. Some farmer somewhere worked to grow it. 
Yeah. Some rancher produced it. Some, I, I'm telling you, it's not free. This whole idea of looking to government, government was never to be trusted. Now, this is not a political speech, but I want you to pay attention, okay? I want to stay straight out. Don't trust government. Government is to be watched carefully. That's why years ago a fellow said, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. you got to keep an eye on it. So, preacher, why are you so down on government? It's not government. It's because government's operated by people. And you get the wrong person too much power, and they want more. You got to watch them. You got to care. Keep an eye on them. You can't trust them. Why? They're people. Give them too much power, you get into problems. They'll get into problems. And uh, you said you got any names? I'm not talking about names. Just in general. Right. It's the work of men. It's the work of men. God never instituted government to take care of it. Now, God did institute government. It's in the Bible. But government was never instituted for you and I to depend on government and for our trust and our confidence to be in the government. Not on your life. Let's go back there. Would you think with me again, Hezekiah? Yeah. I mean, with, about Hezekiah being asked this question in 2 Kings chapter 18. What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? How about you, Hezekiah? Where is it? Where is it? I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe Hezekiah was trusting in any of the ones we mentioned. I don't believe he was trusting in himself. No, I don't believe he was. He did have a certain amount of wealth. He was the king. Most kings are not paupers. Okay? But he did have a certain amount of wealth. But I don't believe he was trusting in that wealth. He knew better than that. Hey, he said, well, what about government? That wasn't even an option. He said, why not? He was the government. So he knew better. So what was he trusting in? You got your Bible there? Second Kings chapter 18. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. Here it says, He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. That's where his trust was. When old Sennacherib sent his three uh, stooges to come before the city of Jerusalem to mock and, uh, you know, kind of just scare them, if you will. And to say, who is it you're trusting in? Where, where's that confidence you got? What's it in? Where'd it come from? Yeah. Old uh, Hezekiah said it's only in me. It's in God. Yeah. And it's in God alone. Right. Him alone. Hey, wasn't an option. No other options. Would you stay with me this morning? I want to give you a few things. Uh, and, and as a Christian, I, I believe this is true. I, really, I believe it's true about every man that ought to be. But I'm going to say me. Because I, I can't say us, all right? Because I don't know what you're trusting in. But I'm going to tell you this. When it comes to me, I'm trusting God with my soul. I'm trusting God with my soul. I'm not trusting the Baptist church. I'm not trusting any other church. I'm trusting God with my soul. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I mean, he's the one I came to for salvation. I came to him. And I called upon him when I was a nine-year-old boy because I realized then I had a need. I knew then and I found out salvation not available in any other place, any other individual. It's not to be found in money. It's not to be found in an individual. It's not within me. I cannot save myself. The best I can do, and I split hell wide open. But I'm trusting him with my soul. I came to him and I called upon him. And I want to tell you, I'm not working to get to heaven. I'm not working to get to heaven. I'm not holding on and trying to hold on so I'll get to heaven. I'm not holding on to him. He's holding on to me. All right? He's doing the holding. I'm just not. I'm not praying through. I got through with that prayer years ago. Amen. I called on the Lord and I asked Him to save my soul. I came to Him and I'm completely trusting Him today. 
completely trust in his finished work on right. Calvary. Amen. It's not anything I've done. <clears throat> uh, that song they played for the offertory. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, but this is the dearest, that Jesus yeah. loves me. Amen. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Woo! Man, I'm glad he does. And he saved my soul. I, I, I try not to think about it too often. Why would you do it? I just rejoice in the fact that he did it. Hey, Amen. you said, who are you trusting for your eternal life? I'm trusting him. I'm trusting the Lord. Him alone. Nobody else. Nobody else can do it. If you're trusting anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation and your eternal soul, you're in a mess. You're in a mess. You're in a mess. Now, I'll tell you something else I'm trusting him with. I'm trusting him with my savings. Yeah. I'm trusting him with my savings. I mean, my finances. Yeah. Take your Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6, would you? 1 Timothy chapter 6. Won't you just turn over there and look with me in the Word of God for a moment? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Notice what the Bible says. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. All right. I'll give you a moment there. I can still hear some leaves turning. Uh, after a while now, just look at whatever page you're at. All right. No, we're there. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Here's what the Bible says. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things. To enjoy. Yeah, it is. Oh my, what a blessing. Yeah. Hey, I'm trusting him with my savings. I'm trusting him with my finances. Amen. I am. Uh, right. You know, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Uh, if you were to come and, and uh, take my bank account and look at my, I've got two, I've got a savings account and I've got a checking account. A savings account, I think, is drawing a wonderful interest about oh oh point oh 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 something back there i i you know and uh i get a letter every now and then and they tell me they've added 10 or 15 cents to my savings and i'm so excited uh but uh you know just what a thrill but uh, uh man you know i'm not trusting any of those instant i'm not trusting the fdic with my gun i'm trusting god amen i'm trusting god you see, I learned something a long time ago. When I was a little boy, my daddy, my daddy said, son, you need to tie. Yes, sir. You said, why? Because dad said to. I learned a long time ago, you best do what dad said, all right? And so I started tithing. Now I understood it, the Bible said we should, and I began to tithe, and over the years, I, I just kept tithing, and uh, now I don't tithe now because dad said so. I tied them because the Bible tells me to, and I realize God's told me to do it, so I give. I give. And now the tithe is ten percent of what you get. All right, you're, you're, hey, it's the gross, not the the net. All right, the gross. And uh, so I always tithe off of that, and, and I give. But you know, I found out something. I found out that if you throw in a little extra, God will slap you. That's right. Yeah. I found out if you put in a little extra above that tide. You know, first time I did it, I looked. No, I didn't. I, I didn't be all right. But I found out you can give above the tide. You don't just have to figure it out to the penny, you know. There it is. You know, I found out you can put extra in there. I, I found out later on it's okay to give the mission. Amen. So I started giving the missions, and man, we had the mission conference years ago, and I began to pray and said, Lord, what do you want me to give? And I'd give, and uh, the next year I'd pray, Lord, you want me to increase it? And I'd increase it, and well, right. God's been good to me. And you know what I found out? I found out I can trust Him my finances. You can look at me and tell He ain't going hungry. <laughs> hey, I've got clothes to wear. We got two vehicles. Right. Now, one of them is me and the bank. We've got a partnership going there. But, uh, uh, you know, but we got those two vehicles. I, I live in a house, got a roof over my head. Uh, man, uh, 
You know what I found out? I can trust him with my finances. Yes, sir. I can trust him with my finances. If if the whole thing collapses, the whole financial world folds up. My greatest investment is safe. Yeah, yeah. Because I have been invested in the bank of heaven. Yes, sir. Right. And and you know what? I've been drawing interest on that. Yeah. You, you, you got your Bible open there? First Timothy still? Would you look there in verse 17? He said, I, not, don't, not the trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth miserly to those who... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He said, He giveth us richly. Yeah. But notice the next two words. All things. All things. Why? Just learn to trust Him with your savings. Just learn to trust Him with your finances, all right? Now, wait a minute. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I don't, I'm not standing here saying to you, if you got any money left over, you give every dime of it to God. No, no, no. No. I'm not saying to you it's a wicked sin for you to have a retirement account. It's not. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to tell you what. If you're trusting that instead of God with your finances, you're making a mistake. Right, right. You're making a mistake. Good. Oh man, I learned a long time ago I could trust him with my soul. I learned I could trust him with my savings. I learned I could trust him with my sustenance. You say, what do you mean by that? Matthew chapter 25. All right, Matthew chapter 25. We're not in a hurry, right? Because you don't need to worry about getting in line because you have to stand so far apart. Uh, so uh, look at well Matthew chapter six. All right, Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter 6, look at verse 25, would you? Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. I'm going to read several verses. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and ours cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? I, I'm reading those verses there. If God so clothed the grass of the field, I, I'm thinking right now down in our school property, there's about uh, eight or nine acres right out there in front of the building. And old Brother Dunbar, he went out there and mowed it. So help me, two days later, there was a stuff this high out there, but it had yellow blooms on it. God even makes the weeds look good. <laughs> I mean, there's a carpet of yellow out there in the morning. And if God would do that, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Right. Look there again, verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first. Here's the key. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added Amen. unto you. Amen. Oh boy, if you just learn to seek God first, you'll find out you can trust Him with all your sustenance. He can take care of you. He can take care of you. There, there's a great old song. I, my one of my favorite singers of all my lifetime was a guy named Jake Hess. And old Jake Hess would sing his song. God takes real good care of me. Love the song because there's so much truth in it. God will take real good care of you if you just trust Him to do it. Right. Trust Him to do it. <clears throat> when we've got everybody in the world, we're trusting ourselves, we're trusting money, we're trusting the government. You're in the wrong place, all right? Yeah. Trust God. They came down there to Hezekiah and they said, Now, Hezekiah, you've got to understand all these other nations, uh, they right. trusted yeah. their God. Where did yeah. they yeah. And he said, Now, what are you trusting? Amen. As a guy said, I'm trusting God. I'm, yeah, I'm trusting God. Amen. By the way, I, we're not going to take time to do it. You read the rest of the chapter, it turned out pretty good for old Hezekiah. Yeah, sure did. Just turned out pretty good. Yeah. Trust in God. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, we're to trust him with our life. You know what I found out? He can provide my needs. He can provide my needs. Not only that, I'm going to say this. He's provided a lot of things that are just my wants. They're not my needs. I've got a whole bunch of stuff that are not needs. It's just wants. My kids, I've told them, when I die, y'all can have it all. They said, Dad, we don't want it. <laughs> well, you can do it at the dumpster then, all right? God's provided. God's provided. He'll provide my needs. You know what he saved my soul? He fights my battles. He fights my battles. I'll get out of the way and just let him take care of it. He'll fight my battles. One of these days, he's going to walk me down through that valley of the shadow of death. He's going to walk me through that. And, and I'll tell you what, he's going to welcome me home to the mansion that he's got prepared for me. But can I say this to you? He's no respecter of persons. He won't do one thing for me. He won't do for you. He'll do it all. He's sustained me this far in life. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm figuring he's going to keep doing it. That's right. yeah. I, I'm not in a position to think he's going to quit. When this, you know, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. When all of this coronavirus stuff erupted, right. yeah. I told my wife, I said, if God wants me to have it, I'll get it. That's right. That's right. Right. God doesn't want me to have it, I'm not going to get it. That's right. Now, I'm not going to be stupid. Come on, man. All right, I, I mean, you know, I... I'm not going to be stupid in life. But at the same time, I'm not going to do life worry. Man, I, he's in control. He's in control. He's taking care of me. He's promised. You say, who are you trusting, preacher? I'm trusting God. Who are you trusting? Who are you trusting? Where's your faith? Is it in your finances? I got news for you. They'll trickle away. They'll turn. Right. Is it in you? The day's going to come, you're going to have a hard time physically. Because yeah. you're going to get older. Yeah. No matter what you do to put it off, it's coming. It's coming. And you're going to get to the point where you can't even take care of yourself. Right. Me. So who are you trusting in? Yourself? Who are you trusting? Well, I'm trusting the government. <coughs> you do know that they're counting on you. <laughs> All right? You do know that. Hey, listen, I'm not trusting them. I'm trusting God. Who are you trusting? Where's your confidence? There's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of uncertainty today. There's a lot of uncertainty in life. But I'll tell you this, there's none of that with our Savior and our God. There's no uncertainty. Amen. There's no unknown. He's told us everything He wants us to know. Who you trust? Who you trust? Hey, let's talk about your soul just for a moment. We'll be done. Let's talk about your soul. Who you trust? What about your soul? No, that's the only part of you that's going to last. Yeah. All right? That, that body that I'm seeing, uh -huh. this body that you see, it's not the real me. Uh -huh. The real me is 6'5", slim, trail, broad shot. <laughs> I'm shut down into this little body. <laughs> the real me is inside looking out. Yeah. It's a soul. The soul. Well, it's the only part of you that's going to last. That's right. The body's going to die. Your body's going to die. My body's going to die one of these days. But what about your soul? Amen. Where's it going? For the child of God, the Bible said to be absent from the body yes, sir. Yeah. is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Boom, just like that. It's a move. If the Lord doesn't come back, 
one of these days I'm going to move. Yep. Yep. I'm going to move to, you know, my home. My Amen. Home. Amen. Well, what about your soul? One or two places. It's either absent from the body present with the Lord, or like the rich man, the Bible said he died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Right. One or two places. One or two places. That's it. No other options. Right. You'll die and, and be with the Lord, or you'll die and be in hell. Right. Mm -hmm. If you died today, where would it be? Right. Right. Where would you be? Mm -hmm. Right now, where would you be? Amen. You see, everybody's sitting there counting on tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Now, I brag on the Lord, but I don't boast on about tomorrow. Too yeah. Much. Mm -hmm. God's good, but I don't know about tomorrow. Right. Right. True. What about you? You ready to meet God? You ready to meet death? If you've never put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him to save your soul, you're not ready. No, that's right. You're not ready. Would you come to Him today? Would you trust Him today? By faith, would you say, I'll trust Him. I'm going to put my soul in His hands. Amen. Good. Hey, Christian. You did that with your soul. Why don't you trust him with the rest of it? Right. Hey, Lord, here's my life. It's yours. It's yours. You can do whatever you want to with it. I'll serve you. I'm going to put you first, and I'm counting on you to take care of me. I'm counting on that. I'm just going to serve you. How about it? Who are you trusting today? Would you bow your heads? Close your eyes. Every head bowed and right closed this morning. Oh, my friend, listen to me. Where's your trust today? Where's your confidence? Is it in man? Is it in yourself? Trying to build up a nest egg and someone put it there? Government, where is it? Oh, there's no better place to put your trust than in the God that sent his son to pay our sin debt. Would you trust him today? Would you trust him today? Heavenly Father, Lord, I call upon you this morning. We need to hear from heaven. Lord, there's such a need. We get tempted to put our trust everywhere except in you. Lord, our faith gets weak sometimes. We begin to look around and think, maybe I need something more. Oh, but Lord, what we need is you. We need you today. We need our trust and our full faith to be in you. Our whole life, Lord, in your hands. We need to just seek you first and let you take care of everything else. Lord, I pray for those that are here this morning never trusted Christ as their Savior. They need to trust you today. Lord, I pray they'd do that. I pray they'd do that. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I want to ask this question. Anybody here say, Preacher, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior, but I know I need to. Would you pray for me? And you'd slip your hand up and say, Pray for me. I've never trusted the Lord, but I know I need to. Would you pray for me? Anybody, anywhere in the auditorium. Would you pray for me? Lord, now you know the need. Move in lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Our invitation is different in this day. Uh, we ask you to do this. If you need to pray, you just remain seated. And rather than coming to the altar, coming to the front, you remain seated. You do business with God right there for y'all. If you're here this morning, you need to trust Christ. I, I just ask you to do this. I'll be back at the back and uh, when we dismiss and I just ask you if you would to stop and say to me preacher I need to talk to you I need to trust the Savior and we'll have somebody either myself or somebody take the Bible and show you what you need to do but Christian you, you make a dreadful mistake when you don't learn to trust the Savior you don't trust God with your life as we sing you need to pray. You just sit there and pray, would you? While we sing the invitation. Come on. John.